Hey everybody, Larry Berman here, and here's what's on my radar late Friday afternoon. So normally wait till we get to the close, but I've got to get to a wedding tonight, so I'm doing a little bit early. Uh, no worries there. Let's dig in and have a look at the chart room. Friday, we got a uh, lot of data out. In fact, in the last couple of days, uh, initial claims data that came out on the 29th was was under 200,000. The the labor market remained strong. When we got some of the inflation numbers and specifically the personal income and spending numbers that came out on the 30th, uh, on Friday, we saw this key metric that the Fed likes, this core PCE deflator, come in at 4.9 higher than. Um, and as soon as that printed, we saw some e minis hit the tape and what was a green tape turned into a red tape very quickly. The markets tried to rally a little bit today. Uh, midday, again, European close, we got a bit of a sell-off. Uh, Loretta Mester, uh, not Loretta Mester, Lael LeBrainerd spoke early this morning. She put a little bit of a hint that the Fed is a little bit more balanced, but then Barkin came out later in the day and said, no, we're, we're not really balanced yet. We're still worried more about, you know, uh, inflation getting out of control and so forth. And when you look at all the forward-based inflation metrics, everything is well contained. Then we get the Michigan consumer numbers and a hint at some of the PMIs that we're going to end up seeing next week. As you can see, as we look at the calendar to next week, the ISM numbers are coming out. But the Chicago PMI came out well below 50. Uh, Bit of a shock there. So as these numbers came out um, that were sort of a little bit, you know, more friendly in terms of expectation. So the long-term inflation expectation number came down. Short-term one ticked up a little bit. Now this is you of Michigan sentiment. This is not a market-based pricing mechanism. When we look at the market-based swaps and what's priced into the bond curve, inflation expectations are well contained. So really important here, but as we get the ISM numbers, a lot of attention is going to be paid to, to attention to prices paid index. If you looked at some of the regional ones, there's a risk that that still remains up, so it doesn't drop below 50. But some of the, this headline number is going to probably start with a 5.0, and that means we're right on the cusp of you know, PMI is turning negative. The correlation of negative PMI with earnings turning down in stocks goes up significantly. So that's an important talking point that will be about the next few quarters. And as the week progresses, you see we get the jolts data again, focus on labor, get capital goods orders, but really, of course, at the end of the week, it's non-farm payrolls. Right now, expectation on non-farm payrolls, uh, 250K. When you X out uh, the government piece, uh, 300K. So, you know, labor markets robust still. When you look at, you know, how much are people making, how, how many hours they're working, there'll see, be a lot of focus on that. Unemployment rate is expected to stay at 3.7%. So, you know, next week, probably not a lot of good news coming from a catalyst perspective to really lift the market. But for the most part, the markets are extremely oversold. Have a look at the futures contract uh, E-minis for September. And we can see that just a couple of weeks ago, things were looking really good. And all of a sudden we got that big surprise on inflation. Folks, if you don't think this is all about inflation, 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 and inflation expectations, you're not understanding the driving factor of the market. So in looking around the world at things that matter when it comes to inflation, obviously energy prices are huge. Have a look at the Baltic Dry Index going back 20 years. And what we've done here is a weekly chart. We put a, a 52 week move, 520 week moving average, so a 10 year average. You know. Outside of the spike that, that was COVID supply chain, outside of the spike that was the war in Russia, 
global dry shipping rates are, have actually come down to what would be arguably the lowest average levels in 20 years. So there's inflation pressures. It's in the labor side of things. What the Fed is doing is not going to fix any of those unless their goal is to see job losses. And so, again, the balance on inflation and wage pressures and job losses, we're going to get some insight into that this week. It should be market moving. All our pro eyes indicators right now are so oversold. We're due for a bounce. It's a bear market bounce. Make no mistake about it. There's no evidence whatsoever that we're anywhere close to a Fed pivot. Never mind Fed starting to cut rates back off on QT. We did see a sign from the Bank of England this week that the QE infinity is still there. The central bank put is still there when markets stop working. And so, you know, no evidence of that in the US markets at this point. So let's have a look at our bull and bear picks of the week. And good news here. Last week, we gave you the private equity ETF, PSP. This week is the private credit ETF, VPC. So if you look at what's happening in the movers today, ETF hasn't been around for a long time. This is the equivalent of, of private equity companies, but that do it on the lending side. This is not a private credit fund. This is the companies that have BDCs, public BDCs and, and trading uh, so there's there's volatility here. The value starting to get very interesting. For the yield seekers out there, when you have a look through the ETF and you look at what that potential yield is, you see an indicative yield trailing uh, coming close to 12%. So it's starting to look very attractive from a risk reward standpoint here. And I, I would I would argue um, you know, PE wise, dividend yield, it's kind of looking really attractive here. So for the coupon clippers out there, that might be something to look at. And one of my favorite ETFs, ZWU, has now come back significantly. And in the last week or so, a little bit of pressure on the energy side, but really the utilities have gotten absolutely pounded. They were very expensive. One of the reasons why I said at 13, I just don't like it. At 12 and a half, I start liking it. I bought some at 12 and a half. I bought some more recently. It's gone even lower than that. The cheaper this gets, the more the coupon clippers want to get into this ETF. Two bull picks, no bear pick. What does that tell you about where I'm, where I'm thinking here now for a bounce? Have a great week, everyone.